Hello. In this video, we will learn how to solve any number program in Python. The programs which we are going to cover in this video are all the programs which require you to break the number into digits and do some manipulation on it like palindrome numbers, pi number, neon number, etc. There are some number programs which require you to find factors. We will cover those in a different video. If you google on number programs, you will see huge playlist or lengthy blogs with all of these programs. So do you need to spend hours going through it and learn number programs? Answer is no. Like how you have a blueprint or a flow plan of a house and you just do customizations on it as per customer requirement. Similarly, what you need to do is learn a basic template and then you can solve most of the number programs using it. So the first thing is that we will assume we have some integer number n which we need to break into digits. This logic does not work on decimal numbers like float. Now you could be asked to take in the number from the user using the input function. It is also possible that you are asked to implement a program as a function where you get this number n as a parameter. So for our program, I will assume we have got n from any of these methods and I will showcase the code starting from this point. I am assuming you do know how to fit in the program after this. Coming back to breaking the numbers into digits, first let me explain the logic of what we are going to use. Suppose our number n is 268. Now the way we will extract a digit is that we will extract the rightmost digit of the number. We will continue to cut out the rightmost digit one by one till our number becomes zero. Now let's write the template program which will give us a digit one by one. Then we can use this digit as per a question. Let's say the question is to print all digits of the number. First thing I want you to do is to make a copy of the number. The reason we create a copy is because when we cut the digits out of the number, we end up making n is equal to 0 in the end. This creates a problem if we need it later for comparison. So we will work with copy m to extract the digits. We are going to use a while loop to break the number in digits. What we will do is set up a while loop till this number m is 0. Then inside the while loop, we will first write the code to extract the rightmost number. How do we do it? We use the remainder operator with 10. What does this do? It divides the number with 10 and gives us the remainder. And what is it? It is the last digit of the number. So we have the last digit in variable d. Now as per the question asked, you will do some processing on it. Like here we will just print it. Now to get to the next number, we need to cut out or remove this number. How will we do it? We will just do m integer division 10. Note here we are using integer division. When you do integer division by 10, what it does is that it gives only the quotient without the remainder. So 268 integer division by 10 will give 26 and it will drop the remainder as it does not give a float value. So now the number will become 26. Now it will come back to the while loop and it will check 26 is not equal to 0. It will enter the loop again in second pass and extract the rightmost digit in D. We will get 6 and we will print it. Then again we remove the digit we have extracted from m by doing integer division with 10. We will have m as 2 now. Coming back to the while loop, it will again check if it is 0. It is not, so it will enter the loop. It will use percent to extract 2 in d and print it. Then it will use integer division to cut out 2. Now we have 0 remaining in m. Now when it goes back and checks the while loop, since m is 0, 
it will come out of the loop and our program is finished. Now let's see how you will use this template if you are asked to write a palindrome program. What is a palindrome number? It is a number which is the same when written from the front or back like for an example 121, 24642 or 3553 etc. Here the logic we will use is that we will find the reverse of the number and then compare it with the original number to check if it is palindrome or not. So what are we going to do? We have a copy of the number in M. Then we will declare a variable which will store the reverse. Then in the while loop, after we extract D, instead of printing, we will form the reverse of the number. How will we do that? Every time we will extract a number and then shift the previous digit we have in sum to left by multiplying it by 10 and then adding the next number. So in pass 1, we will have 0 multiplied by 10 plus D which will give us the number 8 itself. Then in the next pass, 8 will be multiplied by 10 and 6 will be added to it to give 86. Then in the third pass, 86 will be multiplied by 10 and 2 will be added to it to give 862. Now when we come out of the loop, we have to compare if this reverse number is same as the original. Now can you use M for comparison? Answer is no, because during this while loop, when we exit from pass 3, we have cut down M to 0. This is where the copy we made saves us. We will use our original N to compare with sum. If N is same as the sum, then we will print yes the number is palindrome, else we will print number is not a palindrome. Now we have done two programs. And from here you can see that a template is emerging. All number programs require you to do some initialization, set up a loop to get individual digits, then put some logic in between as per the question. Once we are out of the loop, there will be a check logic to say whether the number is palindrome or spy or XYZ number or not. So this is the template which we are going to use. We will now do different number programs by just using this template. Let's start with the spy number. A number is said to be a spy number if the sum of its digit is equal to the product of its digit. For example, number 123. Its sum of digit is 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 which is equal to the product of digits 1 into 2 into 3 which is also 6. So here we need to find two numbers, sum of digits and product of digits and then compare them. So in initialization, we need to initialize two numbers, sum equal to 0 and product equal to 1. Note that whenever we have to find product like in factorial etc. We initialize product to 1 because if you initialize it to 0, then on multiplication with 0, the whole result will become 0. Now in logic, we have to calculate the sum of digits. So we will just write sum is equal to sum plus digit and product of digit is product multiplied by digit. How does this work? In the first pass, it will do 0 plus 3 and 1 multiplied by 3. In the second pass, it will do 3 plus 2 and 3 multiplied by 2. In the third pass, it will do 5 plus 1 and 6 multiplied by 1. Then it will come out of the loop. Now in the check section, you have to check if the sum is equal to product. So we add that. This is our program for spy numbers. Now let's do special number. Special number is a number where if sum of digit is added to the product of digit, it is equal to the original number. For example, 59. Here 5 plus 9 plus 5 multiplied by 9 is same as 59. So here we need to find two numbers 
sum of digits and product of digits and then compare its sum with the original number. In initialization, we will initialize two numbers, sum equal to 0 and product equal to 1. Now in logic, we have to calculate the sum of digits and product of digits. So we will do that. Now in check, they are asking us to check if the sum plus product is equal to the original number. Here always make sure you never use M for comparison as you know it is zero after the loop is over. So always use the original number N for comparison. This is our program for special number. Let's see the next program Harshad number or Niven number. It is a number which is divisible by the sum of its digit. For example, number 156. Its sum is 1 plus 5 plus 6 is equal to 12 and 156 is divisible by 12. Here again in initialization, you will add only one line to find the sum. In logic, you need to find the sum of the digits as required in the program. Then in the check section, you will check if n is divisible by sum. If yes, then it is Harshad or Niven number, otherwise it is not. This is our program for Harshad number. Let's see the next program, Duck number. It is a number which has zeros present in it. Example 402, 280 are all duck numbers. So here you have to check the digits and see if any one of them is zero. The logic which I will explain can be used to find any other number too instead of zero or it could be also be used to count the number of times a particular digit occurs too. So here in the initialization section, we will have count set to zero. In the logic section, we will just write a if statement to check if d is equal to 0. If yes, we will just increment the count. Now in the check section, we just need to check if count is greater than 0. If yes, then that means it has zeros and it is a duck number. If it was print how many times 0 occurs, you can just print the count. Instead of 0, you can check for any number and its count in this program by just changing the number in the if expression. Now let's do neon number. A neon number is a number where the sum of digits of the square of the number is equal to the original number. For example, if the input number is 9, its square is n multiplied by n is equal to 81. Here please see that you do not have to find the sum of the digit of the number. You have to find the sum of the digits of the square of the number and then compare it with the original number. So first in initialization, you will initialize sum to 0. Then you will set m is equal to n into n which is its square. In the logic section, you will find the sum of digit which is asked in the question. Then in check condition, you will compare if sum is equal to the original number which is n. This gives you a neon number program. Now let's do automorphic number. An automorphic number is the number which is contained in the last digits of its square. Example 25 is an automorphic number as its square is 625 and 25 is present as the last two digits. Here we have the number and its square. The logic we will use is that we break the digits out of both numbers and then compare to see if they match. If any of them does not match, we will raise a flag. Once out of the loop, we will check if the flag was raised. Accordingly, we will declare the number as automorphic or not. So here in initialization, we will set a variable flag to 0 and find the square of the number in another variable q. In logic section, we will add the lines to extract the digits from the second number 
which is d1 is equal to q% 10. We will compare d with d1. If d is not equal to d1, then we will raise the flag. We also need to do integer division of q also by 10 to get to the next digit of q2. In our check section, we need to just check if flag equal to 0. If yes, the number is automorphic. If no, it is not. So this is our program for automorphic number. Now let's do Krishnamurti number or special number. It is a number which is equal to the sum of the factorials of all its digits. For example, 145 is equal to 1 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 5 factorial. Here again in initialization section, we will put sum is equal to 0. Now in the logic section, you have to find the sum of the factorials of the digit. So before you can do the sum, you have to find the factorial. For this, we can import a math library which has a factorial function which we can use. In the sum now, we will add the factorial of d. In the check section, we will just check if sum is equal to m. If yes, it is a special number, otherwise it is not. So this is your program for Krishnamurti number. Hope you have understood these programs. If you have any issue in understanding these programs, you can always reach out to us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and all the best. Thank you.